All right, instructions for the locomotive fireman, part one, general. In becoming the locomotive fireman, you are serving as an apprentice with the perspective of the locomotive engineer. You should consider the engineer for whom you are firing the same position of, uh, as the foreman of the shop in which they might be learning a trade. In no other, in no other situation, in closed operation more important between two persons that between the engineer and the fireman operate with the modern locomotive upon the decision performance of the two men, depending on the proper operation of the locomotive and skillful handling of the train. The engineer. Is responsible for the locomotive and then performance of the fireman is responsible for the engineer. Lack of the crew operations far reaching may result in disastrous consequences. There are different kinds of equipment used on locomotives which require care and skills and intelligence to operate properly to secure the best results. The purpose of this book is to give you a general idea of the various kinds of equipment in the operation, their operation to prepare you for the promotion of locomotive engineer. All right, chapter one, description of boiler bag and end arc tubes, the circulator, fusible drug, drop, plug, smoke, um, plug smoke and box steam pressure safety valves. All right, see, so you have the back end, your dome, your stack, your smoke box, um, your barrel, locomotive boiler, figure one. All right, your boiler, locomotive bo boiler, figure one, page seven, is the cylindrical shape in which examination of the back end, with which the rectangular shape structure. Boiler is provided with the front and the black back flute sheet through the tubes and the flute, flute pass of the firebox and the steam dome and has smoke box at the front end. Or your back end. The boiler back end consists of two shelves, figure two, page eight, the fireback's inner shelf that consists of the crown sheet, the two side sheets, the flue sheet, um, through which tubes and flues extend into the smoke box door sheet together with the arch tube circulator. If you use firebox on a larger type of locomotive to have combustion chambers with an inside throat a sheet. The outer shell consists of the roof sheet with the two wrapper sheets, the back head and throw sheet, the inside of the outer sheet are obscured with a mud ring located between the sheets of the bottom of the firebox. The inside sheets are contact in contact with water on one side so that the heat is transferred to the water and prevents damage to the sheets during doing due to overheating the space below the crown sheet between the inside and outside sheet is known as the water legs. Figured um two boiler packs starting on the back head arch tube um door sheet um fire door opening front th um th throat into inside sheets and outside um M M M D riveting grates arch brick combustional cha chamber um full side sheet and uh wrapper element and one crown one of the crown one crown sheets rock sheet Blue sheet and flues are more, um, most sensitive to the sudden change of temperature arc tube. The arc tubes are steel box, um, tubes extended from the lower part of the firebox at the front to the top of the door sheet and are the purpose for the supporting of the bridge arc, brick, brick arch, figure 2, page 8. Figure 3 shows the typical insulation with the coal burning t um, type of circulators. Um, circulator tubes. Circulators. Circulators are steel tubes connected with each side of the firebox with the extension of the crown, uh, into the crown sheet. They add to the effect of heating with the area of the boiler, improve the circulation of the water inside water legs over the crown sheet, and also support the brick arc in figure 3, nine, page uh, 9. Fusible drop plugs. Each locomotive of the firebox is going to be equipped with a 2 to 6 fusible drop plug. Figure 4, page 10. The plugs have often soft metal around the center of the core with the with screwed with the crown sheet with the top of the plug extending above the level of the sheet. The purpose is to prevent the damage from the firebox from the low water. If the water over the crown sheet gets below the top of the plug and if the heat from the fire of the melts of the soft metal causing the center of the core to blow out, the escaping steam stands to de dead end of the fire and for reduce the pressure of the crown sheet on the crown sheet, um, given the warning that so of what that has occurred with a loud hissing sound, any of the unusual sound in the firebox should be carefully investigated to determine the cause. If due to the core of the fusel plug blowing out of the fire must be immediately dumped and extinguished the matter reported at once. Figure 4 shows a fusible plug, 1 and 1 quarter inch brass crown sheet, fusible metal and drop, drop plug. Your smoke box. The smoke box is secured with the front end of the boiler located inside of the smoke box or pipe to carry the steam from the um, boiler to the steam chest with the valve chamber to off the draft appliances to the crate. The draft of the locomotive is not working. The smoke sack located on the top of the smoke box is only outside of the portion of the draft appliances. Steam pressure. Steam pressure is the pressure per square uh, inch inside of the boiler, shown with the steam gauge located at the back head. And uh, on the back head, the ma uh, maximum working pressure for the each locomotive is shown with the badge plate secured with the back of the head. Safety valves. Each locomotive boiler is equipped with at least two safety valves. Figure 5, page 11. Their purpose of the relatively boiler excessive pressure of these valves is located on the top of the boiler, operating automatically. If one of the valve fails, does not relieve the pressure fast enough, um, the other valve will assist. It's important to know that the safety valves on the maximum working pressure are shown on the badge plate that can be determined on comparing with the steam gauge with the opening and discharge steam of the safety valves. 
All right. Um, you have your spring bolt, your lining nut, and bolt your uh, your uh, amplifier dome, upper spring button, spring spring case, um, spring lower spring bottom button, adjustable ring seat and ring seat, ring bolt, adjusting ring. Um, can't read that. It's a safety valve. All right. Questions. Question one's on chapter one. Describe the general shape of the local boiler. Two, what is this boiler back end of the consists of? Three, what is the inner shell of the boiler back end called? Name the shape, uh, sheets of the compromise of the firebox. Name the outside sheets surrounding the uh, firebox. Six, where the mud ring is located. Seven, where's the mud, um, seven, where's the sheets entirely surrounded by the water for what purpose? Eight, what are the water legs of the boiler? Nine, what are parts of the boiler most, sen most sensitive to sudden changes of temperature? 10. What are the arch tubes and what is the purpose? 11. What are the circulators? Um, 12. What is the purpose of the circulators? 13. What is the fusible drop plug? 14. Where where are the fusible drop plugs located on the firebox? 15. What is the purpose of fusible drop plugs? 16. What occurs with the fusible drop plugs when the water over the crown sheet gets be below the top of the plug? 17. What should be done if the core of the fusible drop plug is blown out? 18. What should be done if the unusual sound is heard in the firebox? 19. Where is the smoke box located? 20. What are plants located in the smoke box? 21. What is meant on the steam pressure and how can you can tell what steam pressure you have been uh, have on the boiler? 22. How do you tell the maximum working pressure on the locomotive boiler? What is the purpose of safety valves on the locomotive boiler? And 24. What is why is there more than one safety valve necessary? 25. Why should the safety valves open and how can they be determined? Chapter 2, um, Description, ga Operation, Gauge Cox, Water Glass, inj Injector, Feed Water Pumps. Alright, I guess this got eight chapters to it, sorry. I thought it was in parts of it. Um. Chapter 2, Description of Operation, Gagecock, Water, Gas, Injector, Feed, Water, Pumps. Um, Gagecock, the gauge cocks of the valve, screw them into the back, back head of the figure 6, page 13, water column, figure 17, uh, figure 7, page 14. For the purpose of exerting water to the level in the boiler determined by the discharge water on the seam from the drip pipes and the edge of the gauge cock, the difference between the water and the seam can also can only be determined by the locking, locking and seeing what comes on the drip pipes. Never trust the sound. Gauge clocks must be tested before each drip and used frequently when the engine is working and immediately after closing the throttle if conditions require. All right, figure six, figure five, figure six, water glass and gauge cock back heading. Top water glass gas gauge, um, water, water, um, water, um, Get glass um, benchmark bottom water glass glass valve water water glass drain valve water glass drain pipe back head gouge um, gauges and gauge cock for drain pipe the drain pan. Some class of locomotives have to um, have unusually long crown sheets that equipped with the auxiliary set of the gauge cock known as the mountain, mountain gauge cock. They are located in the top of the back head of the heavy feeder tube of the inside of the boiler, extending from the gauge cock to the front end of the crown sheet with the top of the tube with the extending of the seat grave to ensure that there is sufficient water over the front of the highest point of the crown sheet where it is definitely, where it is definitely no, different, different, different. Definitely known um, that there is no indication of the water out of the bottom of the gauge cock. The fire must be dumped, um, must be dumped and extinguished immediately. Water glasses. The water glass and glass gauge, glass gauge connected at the bottom of the end of the either the back head, figure six, page thirteen, water column, figure seven, page fourteen. The bottom and lowest reading of the glass is on the same. All right. Um. All right, seven, arrangement of water column. You have your steam, steam pipe with the top water glass valve on the back head. Um, the water column, the benchmark, your gauge cocks, water ga um, glass, your bottom water glass valve, uh, water glass drain valve, connection in the boiler water column drain valve. Um, 
Level with the bottom of the gauge um, cock is auxiliary to the gauge cock for the purpose of association with the water level of the boiler, but it must um, be wholly dependent upon. The water glass water column must be blown out before each trip. The water glass test in the following manner to ensure the water is circulating in the glass. The water glass valve operates properly. Um, the water column, if used, must be blown out first to keep the sediment from entering the water gla um, glass. Opening the water glass drain valve to blow out the water glass for the closure of the bottom of the water glass valve. Know that they're not in there is a good flow of the seam through the drain pipe. Three, the for the, the close of the top of the water glass valve, see if there's both cocks are tight, and they should be no there should be no discharge on the drain pipe. Open the water valve the glass water glass valve with wide and note that there is a good flow of the water for the, from the drain pipe. Flow slowly open the top of the water glass valve valve wide. After the drain valve should be slowly closed. Note that the water glass indicates the same level of the gauge cocks. During the trip of the water with the column of the water glass, it must be blown over to ensure the proper water circulation. The least amount of the water carried into the, the boiler is dependent upon the position of the engine. Being, but a significant, sufficient amount must be carried at all times to ensure that the full protection of the crown sheet with the flues with the running with the on the level of the track against the greatest amount of the carriage should be one half to two thirds of the glass. When going up a grade um, with a locomotive such as an I or K type, they are not equipped with the mounting of the gauge cock. The water level of the front of the crown sheet will be about two inches lower than the shown in the water glass for each one percent of the grade. Um, benchmark. The benchmark is the metal plate that they secure with the back of the head on it with a notch on it, indicating the lowest visible reading of the water glass and the center of the bottom gauge cock with the figure 6 and 7, page 13 and 14. It should be um, checked to ensure that the water glass and the gauge cocks are in line. Um, injectors. Inject the device of the force of water into the boiler with using steam pressure. The following general type of their youth lifting injector figure page 8, figure 8, page 16, and non lifter injectors figure 9 and 10, page 17 and, and 18. 19. All right, lifting inspector injector. The injectors are located on the back head of the above the water level. The tender must raise the water force into the boiler. They are operating in the following manner. See the tank valve valve and the seam line with the injectors. Water overflow valve with injectors are open wide. Figure 8, lifting injector. Um, shows the steam pipe connection, overflow, steam ram, water valve, feed pipe connection, um, airflow overflow pipe connection, boiler check connection. All right, two crack steam um, ram un until injector is primed. This can be determined by the sound. Three, the pull of the seam wide or steel seam ram wide open. Note that there is no discharge from the overflow of the pipe. The water seems comes from the overflow pipe. In the case the injector is not delivering all the water to the boiler due to some of the defect regulator with the water valve with the quantity of the water desired. Lifting injectors in their piping tank hose. The tank valves can be prevented with the from freezing when not used frequently in cold water in the following manner. One, close the seam supply valve in the turret. Two, close the injector overflow valve. Three. Open the injector water valve. Four. Open the injector steam ram. Five. Open the steam supply valve with a deterrent and a sufficient amount to let steam pass through the injector, the tank hose, and tank valve. Care must be taken to know that the, uh, that the tank uh, tank valve is open, but the steam pressure will build up in the tank hose and cause it to burst. When the steam is used to prevent freezing, care must be exercised to prevent overheating the water in the tender. All right. Figure um, nine. Non-lifting injector. You have your. Uh, You have your, your starting valve, steam pipe, leading into what is the water valve, um, the injector bracket, injector overflow valve, the delivery pipe, the overflow, and the feed pipe. Non-lifting injectors cannot raise water and must be located below the lowest water level in the tender. At these receive the water supply by the gravity. There are two types of non-lifting injectors, and they are operative in the following manner. All right. Non-lifting injector of the water um, overflow valve with extension through the cap floor and starting with the valve at the front of the cap figure 9, page 17. Um, open the water overflow valve's prime injector by cracking the starting valve. 3. Pull the start wide, valve wide open. 4. Note that there is no discharge from the overflow pipe. 5. Regulate the valve with the quantity of the water. Um, desired the injectors together with it, with its piping and tank hose. The tank valves can be prevented from freezing when not used frequently in cold weather. In the following manner: close the injector overflow valve. Open the injector water valve, water valve. Three pull the starting valve, opening sufficient amount to let the seam pass through the injector tank hose and the tank valve. The extension rod used to operate with the starting of the valve can be secured with the desired position by means of the notches and slots of the rods. Care must be taken to know that the tank valve is open, but the steam pressure will build up in the tank hose, for causing it to burst. And when the steam is used, the freezing of the car must be exercised to prevent overheating with the water and tender. 
The Type SR non-lifting injector with a single lever to operate with the quadrant in your side of the cab, figure 10, page 19. On the type of the injector, the lever controls both water and steam. The first movement of the lever primes the injector and the lever is pulled back into the upright position. Water and steam valves are both open wide, and the injectors operate at the full capacity, moving the lever headed with wide open with the position, reducing the capacity of the desired amount of the water can be maintained in this position by... Latching the lever into the quadrant, the injector shut off with the move by moving the lever all the way to the he- all the way ahead. Are you at the front of the cab? The mud ring, the steam pipe, uh, delivery pipe, um, your n- type SR non-lifting in- uh, injector, injector bracket, is a steam valve, water valve, heater pipe, um, feed pipe, feed pipe, and overflows. This type of the injector together with its piping the tank with the tank valve is preventing with the freezing when it not used the regular of the cold weather the cracking the valve with the heater line with the injector in all cases of the water where the steam is used to prevent freezing and care must be taken to prevent overheating of the water in the tender cistern. Um, care must be taken to know that the tank valve is open when the steam pressure will build up in the tank hose and cause it to burst. Feed water pumps. A feed water pump is used for the supplying of the boiler with water that has been heated before it enters the boiler. The use of the heated with water affects the fuel savings. The following type of the feed water with the pumps are in use for the on locomotive at the present time. Wor- Worthington Type B, Figure 11, Page 20. Worthington um, Types S A S S Type S S A S A S, Figure 12, 13, 14, Page 21, and Hancock Turbo Feed Water Heater. Figure 11, type B feed water pump, um, steam cycle cylinder, steam chest, piston rod, heater, cold water, silica cylinder, hot water cylinder, um, cold water suction from the tender, um, your safety valve, your exhaust steam inlet, and from locomotive c- c- cylinder. All right, the word type B, S, B, S, S, A, and S, A, S, feed water pump. The type B is combined with the vertical unit consisting of the steam cylinder, hot water cylinders, and heater. The type S, A, S, A, S, S, A, S consists of three separate units located as follows. Cold water pump in figure 14, page 21 from the type S is mounted under the right side of the cab while the type S, A, and S, A, S is mounted on the left side. B, the heater of the figure 12 and page 21, which are set into the top of the smoke box. The C, the hot water pump and figure 13, page 21, mounted on the side of the boiler. Figure 12 shows the feed heat, feed water heater, and 12, figure 13 shows the reciprocating hot water pump. Figure 14 shows the central figure cold water pump. The Worthington feed wa- um, water pump should be used only when the locomotive throttle is open, when the injector is inoperative, as the heater is, the, is receiving the exhaust steam from the locomotive from which it can be recovered heat, returning into the boiler with the feed water, all types of Worthington feed water pumps, and the water is heated delivered into the boiler in the following manner. The water is taken from the tender by the cold water of the pump, delivered to the heating of the chamber where it comes into contact with the exhaust steam from the locomotive cylinder of the combined steam, the heated with the water. The water then passes through the hot water pump and is delivered to the... Um, Delivered to the boiler through the discharge pipe in the boiler check. The feed water pump should be started slowly up the opening with the steam valve to force the water out of the steam cylinder to show whether the type B pump is operating delivery indicator a indicator connected to the suction pump suction pipe to place with the convenient location on the back head of the cab. The movement of the plunger indicates the pump is operating. The type S pump is equipped with a gauge on the cab that connected to the discharge chamber and the hot water pump indicates the movement of the hand whether than with a hot water the pump is operating. The type SA S A and S A S are equipped with the cave cab gauge connected with a cold water discharge pipe and register the water pressure developed by the cold water pump and delivering water to the heater. The suction pipe and tank hoses from all types of the Worthington feed water pumps can be kept and from the freezing with the cracking of the valve and the stem line steam line to suction pump the valve must not be open too wide as to too much steam may cause the pump to become steam bound. All right, your Hancock um, Turbo Feed Water Heater. The device delivers the heat water to the boiler when the locomotive is working, drifting, or standing. The principal parts of the heater are operating valve, central figure pump, the unit condenser control valve, automatic heating valve, and six of the bypass valve. The operating valve is used for the start and the stop of the pump to regulate the amount of water entering the boiler. The central figure pump the cold pumps cold water in the tender to the condenser and the hot water from the condenser to the boiler. The condenser receives the cold water from the pump with the passes it through the series of jet condensing the heat, steam, uh, heat the steam returns the heated water to the pumping out unit for the delivery to the boiler. The control valve allows exhaust steam from the locomotive cylinders to enter the condenser. It also prevents water from passing into the locomotive cylinders when the system is not in operation. The automatic heating valve. The range 
This is the live steam of the entering the condenser when the locomotive is standing of the drifting of the exhaust steam to the heat of the water when the locomotive is working. The bypass valve, the system the regulating of the amount of the water being fed for the boiler also prevents hot water from flashing into the steam on its way back to the pumping unit with the, from the condenser. The water is heated and delivered into the boiler with the following general manner. Water comes from the tender through the suction pipe to the first stage for the pump, then is delivered to the nozzle of the condensers in the pass through the tubes of the condenser forming a jet which goes off the locomotive cylinder and enters the heat of the water. The heated water is delivered to the condenser back to the first stage of the hot water pump and three hot water stages as it check as it pressure is built up high enough to lift the boiler check boiler check part of the hot water being delivered from the condenser is being bypassed back to the hot well and into the tender which is built 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 around the tank valve. Or when the locomotive is standing in the drifting of the feed water is heated for the live stream of from operating the valve through the automatic heating valve, the feed water heated is operated in the following manner. We're opening the regulated wheel wide um, to pull the hand over the operating valve at the priming position, let it stay there until the assume some steady pressure is indicated with the delivery pressure of the gauge. Three, pull the hand over the operating valve with the wa- wa- wide open, but the delivery pressure gauge will then indicate that the pressure is slightly higher than the boil pressure showing the water is being fed off of the boiler. If the system does not start after the flowing of the bubbles, the instruction of the parting of the operating handle the primary priming position of winning the sparking or sprinkling hose valve with the waiting until the steam pressure is indicated on the delivery pressure of the gauge of the steady flow of the water and coming through the sprinkle ho- sprinkling hose the pull of the handle to the pumping position locomotive is standing open and drain cock and the control valve condenser suction pipe before the placing hold in the prime position. Two ball bearings are in the pump, and the unit are the only p- um, points in the system requiring l- lubrication. The oil cup of these bearings are filled with the ASA- ASAE oil by shop forces. Engine crew should be th- see that these um, cups are properly filled before leaving engine house territory. Engine valve oil must not be used in these cups. Our questions um, of chapter questions on chapter two um, twenty six. What are the gauge cocks? Where are they are located? Twenty seven. What are the purposes of the gauge cocks? Twenty eight. How can you tell the difference between the water and the steam when operating with the gauge cocks? Twenty nine. What determines the water level in the boiler when using the gauge cocks? Twenty thirty. What are the most gauge cocks being tested, and how often shall they be used? Thirty one. What is the ma- what are ma- what are mountain gauge cocks? Thirty two. What is the purpose of mountain gauge cocks? Thirty three. What must be done whether there is no discharge of the water from the bottom of the gauge cock? Thirty four. What is, what is the, what what is the water glass and where is the low? Located 35, what is the relation between the slowest reading of water glass and the bottom of the gauge cock? 37, should it be depend entirely upon the indication shown on the water glass? 37, when using water column, water glass being blown out and the water glass tested. 38, when, what is the reason for testing of the water glass? 39, what do you test the water, how do you test the water glass? 40, what is the least amount of water should be carried into the boiler? 41, what is the greatest amount of water that should be carried into the boiler when running in the lag level track? 42, ascending um, grade in the locomotive with the I or K type, there is no equip with the mountain gauge cock. What is the variation of the water over front of the crown sheet um, with the showing of the water glass for each of the own percentage grade? 43, when benchmark, what is its purpose? 44, what is an injector? 45, what is the general type of injectors used? 46, what is each type of the injector located? 47, how do, operate, how do you operate a lifting injector? 48, what should be done to prevent lifting injectors, piping, etc. from freezing? 49. How do you operate non-lifting injector over the type of the SR? What should be done to prevent non-lifting injector over other than the type SR from freezing? How do you operate the type SR non-lifting injector? 52. What should be done to prevent the type SR injector from freezing? 53. What is the purpose of the feed water pump? 54. What are the type of the feed water pumps are now no, now in use? 55. Describe what, briefly what the Worthing intends to be type B feed water pump. Describe briefly the Worthington type SA, S, S, sorry, type S, SA and SAS feed water Water pumps. What should be um the should what when should the wood Worthington feed water pumps be used? Fifty eight hours the water treat um heated and delivered to the boiler of all types of the Worthington feed water pumps. And fifty nine, how do you determine each of the type of the Worthington feed water pump is operating? Fifty sixty, how do you prevent the Worthington feed water pumps and piping etc. from seizing, freezing? Sixty one, what is the Hancock turbo water heater? Sixty two, what is the function of Hancock feed water um? Water heater operating valve 463. What is the function of Hancock feed water valve pumping unit? 64. What is the function of Hancock feed water heater condenser? 65. What is the function of Hancock feeder with water heater control valve? 46. 66. What is the function of Hancock feed water valve? Automatic heating valve. 67. What is the function of Hancock feed water heater bypass valve? 68. What are the principal parts for the Hancock feed water heater? 69. Um, describe briefly the Hancock feed water the heater delivery heated water to the boiler when the locomotive is working. 
70, how is the feed water heat for the locomotive with the drifting and the sanding? Um, what is the proper method of operating the Hancock feed water heater? 71, 72, if the Hancock feed water heater does not allow, does not start after the instruction has been followed, what should be done? 73, what are the points for the Hancock feed water heater system required lubrication? 74, what is the inspection should the engine crew make um, of the oil cups on the bearings of the pumping unit? Um, 75, is permissible the engine and the valve oil in the oil cups of the pumping unit? 76, what are the type of the oil should be used in the oil cups on the pumping unit? Chapter 6, description of blower, brick, and arch gates and ash pan. Blower. The blower, figure 15, page 27, consists of the steam valve located on the on the, located in the cab of the steam pipe coupled and leading to the smoke box where it is attached to the blower ring around the exhaust nozzle. Figure 15 shows the application of the blower ring, the lift um, pipe, the blower ring, jets, exhaust nozzle, blower pipe, and blower ring. The jets in the boiler ring um, point upwards toward the stack. If you use the partial vacuum in the smoke box, it creates a forced draftward draft on the fire when the locomotive is not working, when the locomotive throttle is closed, but the boiler is turned on to keep smoke out of the cab. It must not be used for the strong when the fire is being cleaned, when the when and where, while the firebox door is open, as the cold air will draw in and through the flues, causing them to contract leak. All right, your brick arts. The brick arts is supported by the arch tube, the figure 2, page 8, with the circular tubes, figure 3, page 9, indicates the, um, better combustion, increasing the length of the flange with flame wave with the fuel ba um, blade bed to the fuse and the baffling mixing with the combustible gas and fine particles with gold while holding them in suspension until they are burned before entering the flues with where all combustion ceases that prevents to some extent black smoke giving them fire time fire time to consume the gases to protect the flues keeping the firebox at a uniform temperature to preventing the cold blast over the air entering through the firebox door or through holding the fuel bed with the striking the flues causing them to certain amount of contraction tending them to make them leak. Defective condition of an arc or missing brick should be reported to on the MP62 form of attention. Great. Figure 16, page 28, on metal bars with the cross at the bottom of the tire box for the, uh, for the purpose of the supporting of the fire box. Um, suitable openings are provided within them to permit the air to pass through the fuel bed. Uh, most of the locomotives on uh, the grates are coupled together in separate sections. Each of the section can be operated from the cab means with the great shrack, shrack, shaker post located at the bottom of the back head. The grates are located at level position made by means of the keeper latches are all, all over shaker posts and grates are, can be rocked for the purpose of removing the dead ash. All right, figure 16 shows the great bar with the connection um, for the shaker rod supporting um, lining. From under the fuel bed, removing the keeper of the rim, the shaker post leaving the dumping latch in place for the clean fire. The necessary to remove all the, um, both the keeper and the dumping latch at all other time, but the gates must be kept level to prevent burning of off the edge of the, the bars. Emergency repairs to broken burned grates can be made with placing piece of the iron or other available material over the opening. If the piece of the iron are not available, pull down the sufficient fire break from the arc room from the fire rake to cover the opening. Ash pan. The ash pan is the metal box for the hopper, loca um, hopper located below the grates for the support through the mud ring for the purpose of collecting ash in the hot coals from the firebox. Ash pan doors must be kept closed at all times while the locomotive is running to prevent the hot coals from falling out or setting fires along the right of way. Care must be taken that the ash pan does not become too full with the ashes as grates that are likely to be burned and also air supply restricted. Any defects in the ash pan's doors or operating rigging must be reported on the MP62 report of intent for intention. Questions on Chapter 3. Describe a blower. 77. 78. What is the use of the blower? 79. Um, how can you use the blower be abused? 80. What are the advantages of the brick arch in the firebox? 81. What are the what are grates and where their purpose? 82. And in, in, how, into how many sections of the grates are divided and how are they operated? 83. How can grates be rocked to remove dead ashes from the under the fuel bed? 84. What position must grates be kept in to prevent burning off of the edges? 85. When the emergency repairs can be made to the bro broken and burned grates. Um, what is an ash pan and where is it located? 86. What is important for the ash pan doors to be kept closed? 88. What may, what may result from the ash pan becoming too full of ashes? All right, chapter four, description of using firing stoker tools general. Extreme care must be taken, be exercised in handling and using fire stoker tools to prevent in injury or accidents. When handling these tools, they must be not extended beyond the line of the engine, except with where the length of the tools make it necessary, in which the case it must be known that the tool will not come in contact with other engine obstruction over overhead wire while they're using the tool to have hands in position of the tool where they will not be caught between the tool and other objects or parts of the engine or tender feet should be, firm, be firmly placed before it's slipping or overbalancing. 
All right, figure 17 shows a coal pick. Coal pick, the coal pick, figure 17, page 30 issues. Loosening coal in the tender for breaking large and lumps of coal. The fire hoe and the hook. The, these tools, figure 18 and 19, page 31, are the purpose of the spreading of the fire before leaving the engine house. The starting with the train, they may be used on the road when necessary to rake the fire lightly to break crust from the too heavy firing. Raking the fire bed tends to form clinkers, especially when the hook is pushed um, through the fire. Avoid the use of the tools whenever possible. Your shaker and lever. The shaker level in figure, page, figure 20, page 31, is applied with a great shaker post. The purpose of the shaking grates, the lever should be applied. Um, correctly and secured to the shaker post with the feet of the race in, form, in firm position to maintain balance before attempting to shake the grates. All right, um, figure 18 shows your fire hoe, figure 19 shows the fire hook, and figure tw um, 20 shows the lever of the uh, shaker lever. Um, clean out, clean out hole. Near the bottom of the shaker lever, there's a clean-out hole with the purpose of removing the foreign bus substance that may become lodged in the socket of the lever. Interfere with the proper application of the lever and the shaker post. Um, to operate the conve conveyor, reverse the lever, the duplex stroker, divi dividing rib wrench. All right, your duplex stoker dividing rib wrench. The wrench in figure 21, page 31, is used for the locomotive is equipped with the duplex stroker with the socket end, with the wrench is adjusted with the dividing of the rib and the stroker hopper to the desired position. The other end of the wrench, or the wrench is made to fit in the socket of the conveying rear reverse lever for use of the necessary change in, in this position. Your groove cleaner slide plate hook for the 22 slow, stroker slide plate hook and groove cleaner. Your stroker sliding plate hook and groove cleaner. This tool, figure 22, page 32, is necessary on all stroker equipped with the locomotive. The ball part of the tool is inserted in the slot in the stroker slide plates for the purpose of moving them into the desired location. The opposite of the pointed end of the tool is used for the cleaning of the outside of the stroker slide plate groove. Questions of chapter 4. What, what, 89. What are the precautions must be observed in the handling and the use of the fire and stroker tools? 90. What is the purpose of the coal pro pick used? 91. For what purpose is the fire hoe and the hook used? 8092. Describe the proper method of applying the shaker level to the post. 93. For what purpose is the stroker divided and rib wrench used? 94. For what purpose is the stroker slide plate hook and the groove cleaner used? Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Description of operation of hydrostatic mechanical lubricator. Um, figure 23 shows a hydrostatic lubricate, uh, lubricator. Starting with the site, you see your right feed glasses, your drain clock, oil feed valves, your control valve, condensing valve, oil chamber, condensing chamber, steam valve, and filling tube, um, filling plugs. The hydrostatic lubricator. The hydrostatic lubricator in figure 23 on page 33 is located on the back head of the boiler. It's used entirely over the lubricating interior with the cylinder valve with the locomotive, the air pump, the feed water pumps, the stroker. Nothing but the valve oil must be used for the hydrostatic lubricator. The lubricator is started to operate in the following manner. Be sure the steam valve is open, boiler wide open. Two, open the wire of the steam valve at the top of the lubricator, allowing the sufficient time for the side of the feed, ga feed glass to fill with water. Open the condensing valve. Open the control valve. This is so equipped. Adjust the oil feeds as directed by the engineer. Check an interval of the control valve. This is for the purpose of starting or shutting off the feeds for the lubricating with the disturbing uh, adjustment of the oil feed valve. This is obtained with the moving of the handle into the closed all open pump position on the dial when the lever handling of the pump position only feeds to the air of the pump is left open to shut down the lot. lubricator. Close the oil control valve first. Then condensing first, then the condensing valve, and last the steam valve. The hydrostatic lubricator should be started and adjusted before leaving the storage track of the engine house to see that all the feeds are working properly and should be tested. Set um, feed ununiformly in proper amount of 15 minutes before departing the train to ensure the valves and cylinders being lubricated when starting. Lubricators under boiler pressure when operating with no attempt must be made to move the any of the moving parts may any way repair than the seam has been been. Shut off with any pressure removed from the, the drain of the cock. Um, to fill um, to fill a hydrostatic lubricator with the oil, the following procedure should be fill, um, followed. Close all the oil have eaten and place the control valve on the closed position. Close the condensing valve and the steam valve. Two, open the drain cock to allow the pressure to escape. <coughs> Three, remove the filling plug carefully to prevent being um, splashed by hot oil water. Four, apply the valve oil. If there is no sufficient oil to be um, filled, the lubricated water should be used to make up the required quantity. This will expel the air and enable the lubricator to start feeding quicker. All right, um, figure 24 shows your mechanical lubricator. Um, your firing plug, um, uh, fire, your, your oil gauge, your heater line, 
your oil feed lines, your driving an arm, your head hand crank, um, and firing firing flam. Or your mechanical lubricator. The mechanical lubricator in Figure 24, page 35, is a device in which the oil is regulated from the fourth to the point of delivery by the mechanical mechanically operated pressure pump contained within the lubricator. The lubricator is located on the side of the locomotive near the front and, and is operated by some of the moving parts of the valve gear when the locomotive it is used for lubricating with the interior of the steam cylinder as as well as other bearings on the locomotive. A hand crank is provided for the use of the casing of the emergency and the operating mechanism becomes broken or disconnected prior to the departure from the engine half of the tracks. A hand crank should be given at least 25 revolutions to provide initial lubrication with the valve. The engine crew must know that the lubricator is properly secured into the bracket. The operating mechanism is in good condition. The heater is operating by placing a hand on the hand on the end of the lubricator at the bottom end that the hand crank is in place and provided. Lubricator is not subject to boiler pressure and can be filled at any time removing the filling plug with applying the valve oil. The engine crew cannot regulate the amount of oil fed by the mechanical operator. If the mechanical lubricator runs empty in a route is refilled at some intermediate point, a report should be made at the end of the run to the MP62 working report because it is quite probably that the lubricator is airbound and will not feed excessively high or non-noticeably low oil consumption for mileage for the trip should be also reported. Questions in ch on Chapter 5. What is the hydrostatic lubricator located and what is its purpose? 96. What the kind of oil must be used for the hydrostatic lubricator? 97. What is the hydrostatic lubricator started and operated? 98. What is the purpose of the oil control valve? 99. How do you shut down the hydrostatic lubricator? 100. When should the hydrostatic lubricator be started in the feed adjusters? Adjusted 101. Um, when the hydrostatic lubricator is operating, should any of the repair parts be removed? Why? 102. Give the procedure of filling the hydrostatic lubricator. 103. What is the should be given the mechanically up lubricate before leaving the terminal? 104. Why is the hand crank um, provided for the mechanical lubricator? 105. What should be done if the mechanical lubricator runs empty route and is filled with some intermediate point if the oil is consumption for the mileage of the trip is excessively high or noticeably low? All right, chapter 6, Description of Operation Stroke. The stroke of the mechanical device with the command of the coal from the hand from the firebox, the following type of strokes are used in their own, in their own locomotive duplex, figure 25, 28, and page 37, 39. Standard figures 26, 29, and 30, pages 38, 42, and 43. Hana, figure 31, page 45, and Berkeley, page 32, 47. And all these type of the stroke for the coal is delivered to the firebox in the following general manual. Coal from the tender trough into the, by gravity into the trough of the conveyor that moves over them by the conveyor, screw through in a crusher zone at the end of the front end of the conveyor through the whenever the oversized lumps of the coals are broken. Down the size is suitable for the firing. The coal is then moved to the firebox when it is distributed over the firebox. Fire space means of steam jazz. Figure 25 shows a sectional view of showing the duplex stroker is applied to the locomotive and tender. All right, the amount of coal delivered to the firebox is governed by the speed of the stroker engine, which is under the direct supervision of the fireman. The supply of the coal from the tender to conveyor is regulated by the sli slides, the usual practice for the open of the front of the slides when the engine is cold. Um, all strokers are equivalently large and bo booster valve with a seam line with the stroker engine. The booster valve is in addition with the regulator small valve and is um, for the purpose of the crushing hard lump of the coal. By rapidly increasing the seam pressure in the, in the stroke of the cylinder, they assume that the heavy duty is performed. The booster valve should be then closed and the stroker operated with a small steam throttle valve. This tr trouble is occasionally experienced due to the stroker stopping suddenly after it has been working properly for some time. The trouble is usually due to a uh, place of iron, wood, or similar form substance as being Caught into the stroke of the majority of the clogs occur at the crusher zone, figure 27, page um, 27, figure um, page 38 with the conveyor. If they occur for the opening of the booster throttle, if this has no effective reverse structure engine a few times, the continue alternate, oper alternately operate the stroker forward and in reverse to try to work the obstruction through. If in, after repeated efforts the stroker will not work, close the stroker throttle valves and place the operating lever in neutral position. Then look for the obstruction and remove it conveyor screw. Should not be run into reverse more than three full full turns to prevent damage to the rear of the trough. If the destruction of the clog is located with the great care, must be taken to note that the stroke of the throttle valves are shut off with the operating levers in neutral position to prevent the undersired action of the stroker while the removing of the clog. Serious injury may result if the precaution is not taken. Figure 26 shows the standard type B stroker applied to the locomotive. Figure 27 shows the typical arrangement of a crusher zone. Um... 
Do not allow rock, iron, wood waste, or other foreign materials to be fed into the stroker if it can be defective into the coal removed before it enters the conveyor through. Do not use the hooks and fire toolings in such a way that to ask the risking of getting them caught into the conveyor system. Um, screw. Before any stroker is started with the inspection of the visible parts should be made to see that it is in good conditions working order. The steam cylinders of all the stroker engines received the lubricating from the lubricator on all locomotives oil should be fed at the rate of with about three drops per minute when the hydrostatic lubricator is used. Mechanical lubricators adjustment are made by the engine house forces. The only rule for the stroker steam jet adjustment is carefully watching for the of the fire very conditions may call for changing in the firing by the nature of the change of the cannot be predicted by the rule. Um, maximum boiler pressure is shown on the gauge. The minimum of the smoke of the stack indicates the condition of the right in the firebox. All right, figure 28 shows the duplex stroker. Um, shows, shows the elevators, the distribution tube, the transfer hopper, the driver, and driving engine, and the conveyor. All right, your duplex stroker. The stroker consists of the four main um, units, namely, namely the dri driving engine, the transfer hop, the elevator, the conveyor, the figure 28, and page 39. First three of these um, parts are attached to the locomotive of the well. The fourth part is on the tender. The coal, after the passing through the crusher zone, the delivery of the transfer hop beneath the cab deck with the figure 25 and 28, page 37 and 39, where to divide it with the equally and unequally according to the position of the dividing ribbon between the right and left elevators it is raised the means with the screw of the elevator and the elevator's distribution tube to extend through the opening of the back head of the, on each side of the fire door. This distribution portion on each of the tube is located inside of the fire box above the gates. Grates. Sorry, grates. Lubrication of stroker parts. Put, put one fourth pint of the engine oil to the site. Feed it with the cup intervals. Put one eighth of an engine oil in the right and the left of the elevator, elevator casings. This can be done by lifting the pawl shifter on the top of the elevator heading casking and dropping the oil into the small holes of the elevator pawl cover. Full, full, fill oil box on the right and left elevator casing the engine oil with the refill every other two or three hours. Slide support bearings and under universal joints are oil with the cat. Cups under the door in the cab deck. All right, starting operating with a stroker open branch line jet valve, um, which allows the steam to flow from the distributor jet line on the right to left of the jet valves, which regulate the steam pressure on the jets at an R left set. Left set when the stroker is stopped, therefore, in starting the stroker, these valves should be open to at about the right pressure. Always see the steam is flowing through the, the pressure um, through the jets before starting the stroker engine. Place the operating lever in the stroker engine in the running position. Very reversing lever in the forward position. Stroker starter stroker engine by slowly opening the small valve so that it permits condensation to escape through the automatic drain, giving the stroker engine sufficient steam to run at the speed desired. When the coals appear with the distributed plates, adjust the pressure on the jets to get even. And distribution distribution of coal over the entire great area. To the verse or common bear screw in the intender. Stop the stroke uh, stop the stroker engine, move the screw of the conveyor of the reverse layer of lever back to the rear and reverse portion. Stop, stop the conveyor screw screw, place the reversing lever in the center position to reverse the right or left of the ele elevator screw. Raise the ele elevator pawl shifter at the top of the vertical shaft to upper position conveyor. The screw must be stopped before the reversing elevator screw or stroker will be jammed with the coal with coal. To stop the right or left elevator screws, raise the elevator pawl shifter at the top of the elevator to the middle position. Stop the conveyor before stopping the elevator or, um, or stroker will be jammed with coal. To lubricate obstruction with the stroker, um, stall is due to foreign material. Um, shut off the stroker throttle with the place of the tender with the conveyor screw reverse with the lever in the center of position. Two, place the right lever the elevator pawl shifter in the middle or neutral position. Three, operate the stroker engine sufficient into the run of the, le le the um, left elevator. If the left elevator does not operate with the obstruction in the left is in the left elevator. If the ele left elevator operates cut into the right elevator by lowering the pawl shifter, if the stroke operate, st stroker stops obstruction is in the right elevator, if it operates if it operates, obstruction is in the tender conveyor. The obstruction in the tender conveyor will usually be found in the cr in the crusher zone. If the choker on the conveyor screw becomes the inoperative with the broken, the choker engine the elevators can be used to distribute the coal over the firebox in the following manner. Place the conveyor reversing lever in the central position. Raid the trap door in the cab deck and the fire by hand into the choker hopper. Standard chokers, though there are four generally model types, the standard choker is known as the type B, modified B, and HT and LT. Um, figure 29 shows your standard B type, modified type B stroker, protection, protecting gate, distributing jet, and the stroker engine conveyor. 
Difference between the type B and the modified B stroke of the figure 29, page 42 of the arrangement of the screw between the conveyor through the uh, blow and the firebox. The difference is not visible unless the stroker is dismantled. Um, the tender unit with the driving the engine with the operating of the jet valve the air and are the same. And after the passing through the crusher zone with the cavail is carried from the termination of the conveyor with the screw but then by means of the elbow with the gradual curve drew into the straight conduity compare well with the door and sheet with the firebox. The coal is forced through the con this conduity. Sufficient quantities governed by the speed of the stroker engine to meet the Locomotive requirements is then distributed over the fire space by the manual operation of the distribution jets, which are located in the firebox on the top of the back portion of the vertical conduity. But the vertical conduity of the distribution pipes uh, in the firebox are protected from the heat by which is determined by the protecting grate which surrounds the vertical conduity. Alright, your HT stroker, the operation of the conveyor through, um, through the trough and driving engine with the stroker is similar to the Type B with the modified B stroker. However, the both of the Type B stroker to deliver the coal inside of the firebox while an HT delivery coal within the, at the fire door. Figure 30 page of the 43, adjust the vein in each side of the upper and end of the elevator pipe and the controlling of the amount of the coal delivered into the back corner of the firebox. These veins are adjusted by the means of the hand screws and after the obtaining proper distribution, it should be not, be not be necessary to change their shit setting. Figure 30 shows the standard type HC stroker. Um, your stoker and your stroker engine distributing table of the elevator pipe and the conveyor. Alright, lubrication lubricate, lubrication of type B and um, type B modified B and HI strokers. The eccentric crankshaft wrist pins and guys other wearing parts for the stroker engine are lubricated with the splash system from the engine oil in the engine bed. Sufficient oil in the engine bed can be determined by the appearance of the oil when the pet pet cock in the engine bed is open before starting the um, stroke of the fill of the four compartment oil box located in the bulk head of the tender with the engine oil. Apply a few drops to do the universal joints and slip shaft these parts and the blend and surface should be oil. Old once every eight hours, unless the bearings indicate they are running dry. Starting operating on the stroker. If closed, open the distributor job, um, jet valve. They should be open with the main control valve. The distributor will gradually force out of any of the condensation that may be in the distributor pipes. Next, open the main engine valve, steam valve that the turret and this and the small throttle valve with the stroker engine gradually to allow the condensation to escape through their automatic drain valve. Then place the reversing lever on the rod handles into the normal operating position by replacing the control lever in the down position. See if the engine operates in reverse position after the control lever that has again been placed in normal operating position. Give the stroker engine sufficient steam to run at the speed desired. After the stroker has been started, the coal begins to appear at the jets. Adjust the pressure on the distributor jet so that it could, so that as it to get a hot, clear, and then thin fire supply with the valve to jet manifold should be widely open. If one or more holes in the steam jet um, stop stop up, um, close all the jet valves, but um, but one of the control valve, then stop um, then stop one of the controlling. Um, then stop the holes. Open the valve wide. Try to blow it out with the obstruction. If the obstructed hole cannot be opened in the manner, leave the jet valve closed as before. Close the main valve and remove the body and valve stem from the valve controlling uh, an obstructed hole. Then opening the main valve, the vacuum created through should carry the out of the, out of the obstruction. If this method fails, the holes will then will have to be cleaned, cleaned out with a tool. In the event of the a stroker becomes inoperative for any of the reason, the fire may be kept up in hand um, by placing the coal just ahead of the, of the jets, which will be distributed over the firebox. Your LT stroker. The LT stroker is a conversion of the duplex type stroker to displacing the elevator hopper units but retaining the driving engine and the conveyor reverse mechanism as well as the tender unit. New parts applied to the locomotive are similar to those of the HT type stroker. It is fired in the same way that as an HT stroker is operated as a duplex. The stroker is lubricated in the same manner as the duplex stroker is exempting, exempting the elevators. All right, hand stroker. The stroker, figure 31, page 45, consists of the conveyor crusher screw for the, the conveyor coal through the conduity of the transfer hopper and the elevated point of the delivery by the pair of the cone-shaped screw of the fire door housing. The stroker engine consists of a simple two-cylinder horizontal engine completely enclosed. The centrics on the crankshaft, the wrist pin guides, and other wearing parts for the lubricated by the splash system. Sufficient oil for the engine with the bed can be determined by the appearance of the oil. When the pet cock on the side of the engine bed is open, an oil jack show that shaft bearings with the engine oil through the pipe attached to the tender of the front. They apply the engine with the oil to the knuckle joints, the gear housing, and the tender drivers. Figure 34, one shows the general plan view showing the various units for the comprising of the complete installation of the Type 4 H4I1A Hannah Stroker, the Stoker engine conveyor, and the gear case. 
Or starting the operating of the stroker. Be sure the main terminal valve is open. Open the jet valve to see if the passes are free from obstruction. Open the structure engine operating valve and slowly to exhaust condensation with the heated cylinder. Adjust the jet pressure for the proper distribution. Stalling with the stroke of the following causes many stall of the stroker. Lack of lubrication of the stroker engine cylinders. Two foreign material in the coal. Determine the cause of the stalling of the slow reversing of the stroker engine, which is accomplished by holding the reversing handle in the upward position. If the engine will not reverse stalling and then properly caused by the foreign material becoming, low, becoming lodged in the crushing zone on the tender there is possibility many of the be lodged into the conical screws. Slowly reverse the engine several times as dislodge the foreign mariner because it to be passed through the weather without further interference. If this is not dislodge it, if the location should be determined, the removal affected by hand. If not found in a clinical school, screw, investigate at the crushing zone in the conveyor. But if the point is not accessible, further efforts to do the dislodge and reversing the engine are not effective to restore resort to the following. Place the fuel into the door housing of the stroker plate, allowing it to fall into the distribution plate with an increase of the jet pressure of the judgment dictates. Berkeley stroke the stroke of the figure 32, page 47, consists of three main units, namely with the driven engine, riser conduit, and conveyor. The first two of these units are attached to the locomotive block. The third unit is on the tender of the coal is conveyed with the tender distributed with the jet, jet apron by the screws. When the distribution is accomplished by the means of the jet, a blast the top of the flexor of the stroker does not take up the any of the great area. Starting and operating of the stroke with the be sure the main turret valve is open. If the close of the open distribution jet valve, then slowly open the main control valve with the distributor to gradually force out any condensation of that may be in the distributor pipes. Two, three, open the small throttle valve and to the stroke of the engine and gradually to allow the condensation of the escape. The stroke engine is allowed always in the forward position to reverse lever in this field and put, held down with the spring tension required the reversing only when the engine foreign substance should be fouled with the, the conveying system. Four, after the stroke has been started with the cold wing um, to appear with the jets, adjust the pressure on the distribution jet so that it gets to a hot, clear, thin fire. All right, figure 32 shows the illustration of a Berkeley stroker, the top cleaning out door, the riser, and conduity lower cleaning out plate, stroker engine conveyor. It is very important that the stroker engine and crankcase might be filled with the oil before leaving the terminal, um, removing the obstruction. If the stroker stall, if the obstruction is not within the, at the crushing zone in the conveyor, investigate the riser conduity by the opening of the top of the cleaning out door, remove the lower clean out pan, clean out plate, sorry. Question 6, Chapter 6. What is a stroker? 110, 111. What types of strokers are now in use? 112. Describe the general manner in which the coal is delivered to the firebox from the tender. 113. The coal is distributed over the firebox area. 114. What regulates the supply of the coal over the conveyor? 115. What is the stroker, the booster valve, and when it should be used? 116. What is the coal crusher located? 117. When usually the cause when the stroker stops suddenly after it has been working properly? 118. What do obstruction of the clogs usually occur? 119. Give it the procedure for removing the clogs in the conveyor. 120. To what extent should the conveyor screw be run in reverse? 121. What precautions should be taken before the attempting to remove the clogs by hand? And 122. What the precautions necessary? 123. Which should, what care should be exercised in observing the trucker at work? 124. What may what, are, what may result from the careless use of the firing tools? 125. What should be done before any of the trucker is started? 127. How are the, are the steam cylinders of the trucker engine lubricated? 127. To determine the proper adjustment of the steam jets. 128. What are the main units of the duplex storage trucker? 129. What the purpose of the elevator for the duplex stroker 130 with it should the duplex stroker parts be lubricated 131 the duplex stroker and um, started and operated how do you do that um 120 32 how do you reverse the duplex stroker conveyor screw and a tender how do you stop the conveyor screw 134 um, 133 how did the verse of the right and on the left the duplex stroker elevator screws how do you stop them 134 how do you lubricate obstruction of the duplex stroker of the cells due to the foreign material matter 135 how can you look how can the locomotive be fired if the duplex stroker conveyor screws becomes inoperative or broken. 136. What type of standard strokers are used in, uh, on our locomotives? Which are the units are the same type of the type B and type modified B strokers? How do the type B and strokers differ from the type HG type? What are the control for the amount of the coals delivered to the back, type, back corner of the firebox of the HG strokers? What are the vein located for the how are they adjusted on the HT strokers and how are the type B, modified B, and the type HT stroker engines other than steam cylinder lubricated? Um, 142, how can sufficient oil be in the engine bandwidth to determine on the type of the B modified B in the HC strokers? 143, how should the moving parts other than the stroker engine with the type B and modified B in the HC strokers be lubricated? How do you start this operator with the type B modified B in the HC strokers? What should be done if one of the more of the holes in the jet be become plugged? 
What is an LT stroker? How does the LT stroker fire and operate? Describe the hand stroker. How is the hand stroker located? How is the hand stroker started and operated? What is the main cause, uh, main cause of the hand stroker to stall? How can the cause of the hand stroker stalling be determined? What can be done if the standard hand stroker to become an operative? Describe the, describe the Berkeley stroker. How is the Berkeley stroker engine other than the cylinder lubricated at 156? How is the Berkeley stroker started and operated? 157. Then we'll give the procedure for the removing the obstruction of the Berkeley stro stroker. All right, Chapter 7, um, Preparation of Trip, Combustion, Hand, and the Stroker, Firing, Smoking, Prevention. The fire manager's duty for the reporting of the strip of the hours to sign the register, examine the bulletin board for any new general orders or instructions. Upon arrival, the locomotive should determine the amount of water in the boiler, looking at the water glass and trying to the gauge cox. He should apply with the blower, examine the firebox for leaks, and give it the particular attention to the crown sheets and note the condition of the arc. Examination should be made to see if the locomotive is supplied with a full set of the serviceable equipment, examining the lubricator to see that it is working properly, that the in Injectors and feed water pumps working properly. Examine the ash pan. See if the doors are closed. Examine the grater to see that they are from the um, level when they operate. With the check water level indicated with the antenna bulkhead. Open the valve and see that they all, all the telltale telltale are open in the test of the stroker. And he shall he should then prepare the fire from the trip of the man by hand firing. Our combustion. Good combustion consists of the supply of the proper amount of the air to the firebox so that they all the coal put in the firebox will burn without any of the smoke. One pound of the coal requires about 15 pounds or 200 cubic feet of air to burn completely. The air is drawn throughout the ash pan and grates in the following manner. When the locomotive is working, the exhaust steam of the cylinder, grass, uh, cylinder passes up through the stack of the carrying air gas. The gas is lit. air gases out of the crates. The particular vacuum in the air tight smoke box atmospheric pressure for the force of the air through the ash pan opening to the grate and the fire flues, thus creating the draft through the wire flyer through the fire. Be when the locomotive is not working by you for the easier of the made by the air to come up through the um, come up through the fire it is not complete with the, that the coal will be burned, which is another way of saying keep your fire thin. Combustion is best when the fire is thin because the hottest fire is found about four inches above the bottom of the fuel bed. If the thin fire saves um, saves coal and makes a free, freer steaming engine. One pound of coal should evaporate about one gallon of water if the proper firing practices are used. Our, our bitumous coal contains one and one half, or two four parts of gas, gaseous material, five to seven and a half parts of carbon, and uh, about one part of each ash and earthly matter. When coal is burned, with the carbon forms coke, with which burns slowly within without smoke. The gaseous matters burn as flame, and the earthly matters form as ash and clinkers. When the coal is from first headed by being thrown in on the fire. The gaseous matter is expelled in the form of the gas, and if the fuel bed is not hot enough, there are plenty of air pressure. Um, Present in this gas will be burned before the air escapes out of the stack. The air passing through the grates and fire bed burns with the coke with the fixed burnt carbon while the air passing over the fire bed consuming the volatile gas. If it's there, necessary that there is being properly balanced between the air and fuel to ensure the proper combustion, prevent the formation of the carbon monoxide, which is incomplete burnt carbon. If the gas is arising from the coal is unburned, it will produce the smoke, and smoke therefore means waste of coal and, and must be avoided. Alright, nature of coal. Though vile, so called smokeless coal has been the high percentage for the pure carbon and less for the smoke producing hydrocarbon than any of the others. Hydrocarbons make the fire kindle easier. The scarcity of low volatile coal makes the coal take longer to brighten the fire because it is frillable and easily broken. There is not any lumps, and if it is easy to choke with the airspace throughout the fire, hence, be very careful not to put too much coal at any one time into any one location. In general, this the coal chokes easily will not close. Clinker. All right, true clinker coal found mostly in Indiana, Illinois, western Kentucky, to some extent in the Ohio, Pennsylvania, have an ash which is melts at relatively low temperature below 2200 degrees. Um, this ash, when fluid runs down through the, um, through the fire and chilled by the cold air coming up through the grates and solidifies in large sheets of the or pieces, the process of the gradual. However, there are two important rules for keeping a good fire. One, keep the hook out. Two, keep the, uh, to keep the fire clean, lift the, ha lift the hatch keepers been leaving the dumping latch in place and rocking the grates gently as, as the condition requires. 
Watch the fire. Frequently keep it in thin. Do not allow uneven piles to grow. Any coal tending to the clinker, which of the fire has holes in an uneven draft or large pile for the true clinker coals, there are worse in this respect. Use the fire hook. Open the holes in the fire. Allow the portion of the green coal to get into the hot portion of the fire, which melts the ash into the clinker. All right, your slack coal is the portion of below one and one quarter uh, inch in maximum size. High slack coal from any district will, will burn like uh, lump coal from the same territory if the coal was properly distributed over the firebox. Although the slack coal will, in general, have slightly more ash than lumpy could run off to mine. Common practice of referring to as dirt is not to not justify the right the fire builds up in thickness faster than normal rock and not no, not shake. The grades are a little more off uh, more often. Coal is one of the greatest single items of expense for the railroad, and the engine crew can save the coal by properly handling the firing of the locomotive. Care must be taken to keep the coal in the coal space of the tender and should be not permitted to collect on the net gangway and deck steps and when it may fail from locomotive and engine danger lives a person along the tracks that were to be wasted. All right, firing. General, the firebox door must be kept closed except when the coal is being put into the firebox by hand or firing tools are being used. Doors are provided with the indirect opening to provide heated air to assist in the proper combustion of the coal. At no time must a hook or other implement be used to hold the mechanically operated fire doors partially fully, partially or fully open. Either when the firing or standing when it's closed, these doors are locked, shut by air pressure, stand, shut by air pressure and a safety precaution for the engine crew in the event of the failure of some part of the inside of the fire box excessive opening of the fire door prints cold air to the end of the fire box and be drawn through the flues flu sheet and the flues are most sensitive and the sudden change of the temperature may be result in leaking development Coal will be saved and maintain uniform water level by using injector feed water pump to prevent loss of the steam due to the safety valves opening of the 30 pounds of the coal are required to generate the steam of the escape from the large monitoring safety valve within one minute. The high water in the boiler results in water being carried into the superheater and reducing the degree of the superheater in the water being carried to the valve chambers and cylinders and washing off the lubricant, all of which increases the oil and water consumption. Slipping. Slipping of the drivers must be avoided as if the tears and upsets of the fire and cause the waste of the rebuilding. The great bars must be kept at the level so that to prevent the burning off of the fingers of the edge of the bar, they should be shaken off enough to keep the dead, dead, item, uh, dead ashes off the grates to ensure the proper amount of the air passing through the fire, and the, if possible, when not using steam, they must be ta not be shaken while the locomotive is working in or around the station in industrial plants, not, not war while over bridges, trestles, tracks through thoroughs. The fireman should be familiar with the grades and lubrication. The location station should be anticipated the need for the more than less than seam in order to um, have his fire in properly conditioned to meet the work as, as it developed. The following are some of the, uh, the causes to prevent the locomotive from starting freely. Smoke box are not airtight with the amount of the air that enters the smoke box opens the leaf of wood can correspondingly reduce the amount of the air that we would pass through the grates and this results in a reduced draft through the fire. Grates becoming clogged with ashes, their clinkers, and too heavy uh, high fire retards the flowing air through the grates, and this produces a red fire. Restricted ash pan openings, heavy and duty, dirty fluid, fl fire flues, and front end melts and netting stopped up. Fl um, flues stopped up, this will not perm um, permit the fire to burn bright and or uniformly over the grates. Alright, hand firing. Small quantity of the coal placed in the firebox at regular intervals, keeping the fire bright with reduce the smoke of the maintained maximum steam pressure. This is good practice to maintain slightly by heavier fire with the water inside of the, in the center of the firebox. It will prevent the tendency for excess of the air to pass the next to the slide sheet, side sheets, which would cause thin spots to form, allowing the cold air to pass into the firebox. Figure 33, page 54. Thin spots on the holes in the fire cause the improper firing also permits cold air into the entire firebox. Figure 34, page 54. All right, figure 33 shows the thinning action of the drafts along the side. Figure 34 shows the uh, effect of thin shape, spin, spots, and holes in the fire. Um, figure 34, 5 shows temporary reduction firebox temperature due to introduction of shovel of the shovel full of coal. Each shovel full of coal placed in the firebox covers the temporary reduction of the firebox temperature figure from 35, page 54. In order to maintain a light and level um, fire, there should be the restoration temperature before the succeeding shovel of the coal is placed in another part of the firebox figure 36, page 55. 
Adding too much cold to the fire one time and reducing the temperature in the fire box below the ignition point with the result of the combustion and stop them. Until the fresh coal is cleated with the burning point during the end time, there has been a heating enough for the fire box to drive off the gas if the draft has forced these gases out through the stack and consumed. This results in the waste of fuel, unnecessary black smoke. Figure 36 says the restoration of the temporary should before a succeeding shovel full of coal is placed in another part of the fire box. All right, heavy firing at the firing door, figure 37, page 56, lowers the temperature at all the back end of the fire of the box of the fission supply of the air cannot pass through the support. Proper combustion practically eliminates this portion of the firebox for steam generation purposes. When up the cold pile, so up in the firebox, a clinker may form with a practical clinker should be knocked out, knocked through the, the grates to be taken out of the firebox through the fire door hole. And if it cannot be done, this fire rake should be used to pull the cell clinker to the back. Figure 37 shows the effect of the heavy firing at the fire door, such as the firing lowers of the temperature at the back end of the firebox. Figure 38 shows a side view of the firebox showing distribution with the standard stroker. Um, corners. In opening the grace of the breakup of the removal of the clinkers, only one section should be opened at a time. The clinkers removed, saving as much fire as possible. Large clumps of coal dips do not make up the satisfactory fire. They should be broken into pieces approximately 4 inches in size. Stroker and firing figure 38, page 56. In stroker firing, the stroker should be carried with much lighter than when they hand up the firing, starting with a clear, bright coke. Fire free from the clinkers, avoid overloading of the firebox, starve, 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 starve the fire. Good stroker fire is thin enough to, um, to be self cleaning, but the, the result of the grates do not become the fill of the ashes. Correct if the firing is reflected within the steam pressure, with the pressure of the sensitive rate with the firing. The fire is in good condition if the pressure changes with the very slow with the fire. It's too, it's too heavy, the good stroker fire goes out quickly while the stroker is stopped, and then for long station to stop the road, road delay and intermittent use of the scope of the covering of the fire with the coal, which will be coking uh, until the engine starts again. Do not let the fire go out of the spot in, out of, into spots. Final coal can be blown further so that the jets must be placed um, must be closed down slightly from the slack open a little if the coal goes and coal goes and it gets into the much more lumpy if this is not carefully washed the arc can easily be plugged wet the coal is much heavier than the same coal dry hence the jets must be carefully watched if the wet coal cokes on the firing table or duplex distributor use the stroke slider hook or coal will pick up a handle to break it up. Um, no matter what kind of coal you may have on the tender, it is important to realize that there is no set jet pressure can be given to use or various kinds and any type of coal. Then duty for the fireman to watch the fire very closely, particularly when they're starting out to regulate with the jet pressure to get the best distribution. Figure three, page figure 38, page 56. To supply only with the required amount with the coal to watch the fire very closely by shutting off the stroker looking at the time fire, not just the back portion, to know at all times the condition of the fire. Right, wet coal, high, uh, high slack coal, clinker coal, and high ash coal can be fired successfully if the following practices are observed. One, maintain even stroker speeds to keep the um, fire at the minimum depth that will be maintained with the desired boiler pressure. Adjust the stroker jet pressure to maintain an even distribution of the coal over the whole fire. Changing the jet pressure is necessary if the side of the grade or the condition of the coal is delivered at the distribution table changes. Inspect the fire frequently, correct the unsatisfactory conditions. For hand fire, the tight uh, light spots will be necessary to maintain level fire. Five, rocks are great frequently but lightly. Six, maintain correct the water level at all times by even pumping. Seven, fire according to the condition under which the engine is working. Eight, avoid excessive use of the fire hook. Nine, call the engineer's attention to the bad fire conditions so that the locomotive can be worked on accordingly at the end of the trip before arriving at a terminal close to um, the following should be um, done. Close the slide panels, place the operating lever in the neutral position, close the stroker engine throttle valve to maintain the main, main distribution jet valve and the individual jet valve should be left open. All right, smoke prevention. Prevention of um, black smoke consists of a small particle of unburned carbon supposed in the gas that contains a large percentage of the heat value of the coal. Success smoke with is void in the fire that's good for the condition of the coal is supplied with the fire in the upper amount with the coal is evenly distributed over the fire bed. The black um, smoke is indicated by the waste of the coal with the result of the overcrowding of the fire. In other words, feeding the coal goes through the fire box in such a quantity that the session supply of the air cannot be obtained with the burning of the fuel. Figure 38A shows the smoke abatement device over the firing door. Um, you have your blower valve, your globe valve, your um, blower, boiler, and boiler. Proper use of blower when the engine is idle at other times when the throttle is closed with the assessment of limiting the smoke. Um, the smoke abatement device, figure 38A, figure not page 59, should be used. 
should be used when coal is being added into the fire, when the locomotive is idle, then in some other times when the throttle is closed. Excess smoke will be um, produced when the rating of the fire exceeds the rate of the burning. Do not overload the firebox. All right, completion of the trip. On the arrival at the terminal, the engine should be brought to the pit as near the maximum steam pressure as possible with, with little bright fire so that it can be cleaned out without the waste of the fuel. The tools and other equipment should be properly put away in the hood in, inside curtains. If you use, should be, um, be filed and securely properly in place. The engineer should be informed of any defects in the equipment and be handled operated as well as any of the other defects noted on the locomotive so that they can be reported to the MP62 work report. Questions of the Chapter 7. What are the fireman duties when reporting for the service? What is the combustion and air necessary to the combustion? 162. The draft is created through a fire. When is the engine working and when is the engine not working? 163. How do you obtain the best results if using low volatile so-called smokeless coal? 164. How do two important rules should be followed with the keeping the good fire if using true clinker coals? Um, 165, how do you obtain the best result if you're using slack coal? 166, what is one of the great single items of the excitements of the railroad? How can the engine crew help to save the coal? 168, what should be the gangway deck and steps to be kept clear of the coal? 169, how should the fire of the door be handled? 170, the provision has been made with the mechanical fire doors to assist the proper combustion of excess. 171, what bad effects result with the, from excessive opening of the fire door? 172, what parts of the firebox are most sensitive? Sudden change of the temperature. 173, Three bad effect of producing with the carrying water through the hide in the boiler. 174. What is the estimated waste for the coal for each of the minute and safety valve is open? 175. What should slipping of the drivers be avoided? 176. What should be the great bars be kept? Wet? Why and when should the grates be shaken? 178. When must the grates not be shaken? 179. How do firemen anticipate the work of the engine is about to do? 180. What are some of the causes to prevent a locomotive from steaming, fr streaming, fr steaming freely? 181. What is the best method of obtaining maximum steam pressure when firing by hand? 182. When part of the firebox should be fired and by be the heaviest and why? 183. What is the best method of maintaining a light level fire? What is the effect of putting the main, many shovels to full of the coal in the bright fuel fire? Is, what is the effect of the heavy firing at the fire door? What may cause clinkers to form in the firebox? 187. What should be done with the clinkers form in the firebox? 188. What should be done with large lumps of coal and are encountered in the coal supply? 189. How should the stroker fire be carried in comparison with the hand firing? 190. Describe a good stroker fire. 191. What may happen to the good stroker fire when the stroker is stopped? 192. How should the jets be handled the for fine coal for lumpy coal. 193, what should be done in the wet coal coal, coal, coal cokes on the firing table or in the duplex distributor? What are the duties of the fireman of the handling of the stroke jets to get the best distribution with the required amount of coal? 195, how did strokers be handled with the arrival, arriving at the terminal? 196, what is the black smoke? How can excessive smoke be avoided? 1898, what does this black smoke indicate? 199, what, 199, what will assist in eliminating black smoke? 200. What produces excess smoke? Um, 201. What are the fireman duties on the completing of the completion of the trip? Instructions for locomotive firemen, part two, chapter eight.